Hi everyone, my name is Diane Whitley and I work at Park the High Park Early On Child and Family Center. I am the office administrator and for today we're going to be doing a virtual story time. And my name is Glenda Diaz. I'm one of the family support workers at the same center. So for our first book, we're going to read A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All of her friends hated lima beans and she wanted to fit in. Camilla was always worried about what other people thought of her. Today, she was fretting over more than even more than usual. It was the first day of school and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed. Her mother ran into the room and she screamed too. Oh my heavens, she cried. You're completely covered with stripes. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. Mrs. Cream felt Camilla's forehead. Do you feel all right, she asked. I feel fine, Camilla answered, but just look at me. You get back in bed this instant, her mother ordered. You're not going to school today. Camilla was relieved. She didn't want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid of what the other kids would say and she had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes. That afternoon, Dr. Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he exclaimed. I've never seen anything like it. And you, are you having any coughing, sneezing, running nose, aches, pains, chills, hot flashes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncomfortable twitching? No, Camilla told him, I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bumble said, turning to Mrs. Cream, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Here's some ointment that should help clear up those stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And he went off. The next day was a disaster. Everyone at school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Cryan, a night of the living lollipop. She tried her best to act as if everything was normal. But when the class said the Pledge of Allegiance, her stripes turned red and white and blue, and she broke out in stars. The other kids thought this was great. One yelled out, let's see some purple polka dots. Sure enough, Camilla turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, checkerboard, and a pattern of squares covered her skin. Soon, everyone was calling out different shapes and colors, and poor Camilla was changing faster than you can change channels on a TV. That night, Mrs. Harms, the school principal, called. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cream, he said, or Mr. Harms called. He said, I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camilla at home from school. She's just too much of a distraction and I've been getting calls from the other parents. They're afraid those stripes might be contagious. Camilla was so embarrassed. She couldn't believe that two days ago, everyone liked her. Now nobody wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart? He asked. No, thank you, Camilla sighed, but she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans. But she had been laughed at enough for one day. Hmm, well, yes, I see, said Dr. Bumble when Mr. Cream phoned the next day. I think I'd better bring in the specialists. We'll be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in, in tow. They were wearing long white coats. He introduced them to the creams. This is Dr. Grop, Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, Cricket and Dr. Young. Then the specialists went to work on Camilla. They squeezed and jabbed and tabbed and tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, one said. 
Or the measles, another one said. Definitely not chicken pox, said another one. Or a sunburn, said another one. Try these, said the specialist. They each handed her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Take one of each before bed, said the doctor. Then they filed out the door, followed by Dr. Bumble. That night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful. When she woke up the next morning, she did feel different. But when she got dressed, her clothes didn't fit right. She looked in the mirror and there, staring back at her, was a giant multicolored pill with her face on it. Dr. Bumble rushed over as soon as Mrs. Cream called. But this time, instead of specialists, he brought the experts. Dr. Gord, Gord and Dr. Mellon, Melian were the finest scientist minds in the land. Once again, Camilla was poked and prodded, looked at and listened to. The experts wrote down a lot of numbers. Then they huddled together and whispered. It might be a virus, he announced with authority. Suddenly, fuzzy little virus bells, balls appeared all over Camilla. Or possibly some form of bacteria, another one said. Out popped squiggly little bacteria tails. Or it could be a fungus. Instantly, Camilla was covered with different colored fungus blotches. The experts look at Camilla, then at each other. We need to go over these numbers again, back at the lab, they explained. We'll call you when we know something, but the experts didn't have a clue, much less a cure. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel were outside her house telling the story of the bizarre case of the incredible changing kid. Soon, a huge crowd was camped out the front lawn. The creams were swamped with, kind, with all kinds of remedies from psychologists, allergists, herbalists, nutritionists, psychics, an old medicine man, a guru, and even a veterinarian. Each so-called cure only added to poor Camilla's strange appearance until it was hard to even recognize her. She sprouted roots and berries and crystals and feathers and, long, and a long furry tail, but nothing worked. One day, a woman called herself an environmental therapist, claimed she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply and become one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, Camilla groaned. Slowly, she started to melt into the walls of her room. Her bed became her mouth. Her nose was a dresser and the two paintings over her were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we gonna do, cried Mrs. Cream. It just keeps getting worse and worse. She began to sob. At that moment, Mr. Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. He opened it and there stood an old lady who was just as plump and sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I can help. She went into Camilla's room, looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of her head. What we have here is a bad case of stripes. One of the worst I've ever seen. She pulled out a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said, these might do the trick. Are those magic beans, said Mrs. Cream? Oh my, no, replied the kind old lady. There's no such thing. These are just plain old lima beans. I'll bet you'd like some, wouldn't you? She asked Camilla. Camilla wanted a big, Helping, heaping plateful of lima beans more than just about anything, but she was still afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said, no one likes lima beans, especially me. Oh dear, said the old lady. I guess I was wrong about you. She put the beans back in her bag and started toward the door. Camilla watched the old woman walk away. Those beans would taste so good. 
and being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she'd been going through. She finally couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. I thought so, said the old woman. She took a handful of beans, popped them into Camilla's mouth. Mmm, said Camilla. Suddenly, the branches, feathers, and squiggly tails began to disappear. Then the whole room swirled around. When it stopped, there stood Camilla, and everything was back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there somewhere. She patted Camilla on the head, then she went outside and vanished into the crowd. Afterward, Camilla wasn't quite the same. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she didn't care one bit. She ate all the lima beans she wanted, and she never even had a touch of stripes again. The end. The next book we're going to read is called Red is Best by Kathy Stinson. My mom doesn't understand about red. I like my red socks the best. My mom says, wear these. Your white stockings look good with that dress. But I can jump higher in my red stockings. I like my red stockings the best. I like my red jacket the best. My mom says, you need to wear your blue jacket. It's too cold out for your red jacket. But how can I be Red Riding Hood in my blue jacket? I like my red jacket the best. I like my red boots the best. My mom says, you can't wear your red boots in the snow. They're just for rainy weather. But my red boots take bigger steps. I like my red boots the best. I like my red mitts the best. My mom says, your brown mitts are warmer. Your red mitts have holes in them. But my red mitts make better snowballs. I like my red mitts best. My mom says, your yellow pajamas will keep you warm when you kick off your blankets. But my red pajamas keep the monsters away when I'm sleeping. I like my red pajamas the best. I like the red cup the best, my mom says. Oh, Kelly, what a difference does it make? I've already poured it in the green cup. But juice tastes better in the red cup. I like the red cup best. I like my red barrettes the best. My mom says, you wear pink barrettes with a pink dress. But my red barrettes make my hair laugh. I like my red barrettes best. I like red, red paint the best. My mom says, but Kelly, there is hardly any red paint left. Maybe you could use orange instead. But red paint puts singing in my head. I like the red paint best. I like red because red is best. The end. The next book we are going to read is Green Eggs and a Ham by Dr. Seuss. Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. I am Sam. I am Sam. 
Sam, I am. That's Sam, I am. That's Sam, I am. I do not like that Sam, I am. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam, I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Would you like them here or there? I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Would you like them in a house? Would you like them with a mouse? I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a fox? Not in a box, not with a fox, not in a house, not with a mouse. I would not eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I would not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Would you, could you, in a car? Eat them, eat them, here they are. I would not, could not, in a car. You may like them, you will see. You may like them in a tree. I would not, could not, in a tree. Not in a car, you let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. A train, a train, a train, a train. Could you, would you, on a train? Not on a train, not in a tree, not in a car, Sam, let me be. I would not, could not, in a box. I could not, would not, with a fox. I will not eat them with a mouse. I will not eat them in a house. I will not eat them here or there. I will not eat them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Say, in the dark, here, in the dark. Would you, could you, in the dark? I would not, could not, in the dark. Would you, could you, in the rain? I would not, could not, in the rain. Not in the dark, not on a train, not in a car, not in a tree. I do not like them, Sam, you see. Not in a house, not in a box, not with a mouse, not with a fox. I will not eat them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. You do not like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam, I am. Could you, would you, with a goat? I would not, could not, with a goat. Would you, could you, on a boat? I would not, could not, on a boat. I will not, will not, with a goat. I will not eat them in a train. I will not eat them. I will not eat them in the rain. I will not eat them on a train, not in the dark. Not in a tree, not in a car, you let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I will not eat them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. 
I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. You do not like them, so you say, try them, try them, and you may. Try them, and you may, I say. Sam, if you let me be, I will try them, you will see. Hmm. Say, I like green eggs and ham. I do, I like them, Sam, I am. And I would eat them in a boat and I would eat them with a goat. And I will eat them in the rain and in the dark and on a train and in a car and in a tree. They are so, so good, you see. So I will eat them in a box. I will eat them with a box and I will eat them in a house and I will eat them with a mouse and I will eat them here and there. Say, I will eat them anywhere. I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you, thank you, Sam I am. And that is all of the books that we have for you today. We hope that you enjoy them and we will see you soon. Bye.